We are talking heads. Talking heads. Levels exceed the red. Metal heads. We're talking heads. Levels exceed the red. Pushing the mud to the edge. Heavyweight pressure coming down for the metal heads. Are you ready for this? Talking heads. Talking heads. It's just my label, you know, Metal is my label and I've been running it. I started with Doc Scott many years ago, 001. And it was just a prototype label, which I guess it still is in that sense. I mean, he is a figurehead, you know. We have a few in the scene that are like really important key figures. And, and you know, there's Goldie and there's Blue Rider and Frosty, all these people that really hold up the whole thing and make it solid. Yeah, there's been there since like, the, big, the, the big explosion. I mean, it was, all the elements in metal, all the artists have been there since like day dot. Goldie, with what he did with Man, it's really did take the scene and the whole drum and bass thing to another level. For me, Metalhead sort of, it, it brought a lot of people together and within those sort of ranks, everyone sort of set the basic standards of how the music is today. The concepts are head. Everyone's in their head. It's just saying their heads, let's keep their heads, let's go forward. It's not saying that Metalhead is a label, it's the most prestigious whatever. We don't blow any horns, man. It's about a lot of people that have been creative together and making it work. They've, they've done a wicked, wicked job. If you look at the back catalogue, I mean, there's very few labels that have got a back catalogue as rich as the metalers' back catalogue, you know. It's really weird that it's a kind of symbol. I mean, this guy Darren did it, and it was really weird because it was reminding me a very, very strong icon because it was he was it was literally meaning that long after I'm dead and everybody else is dead the music will still be here which is why it's skull with a pair of headphones on I don't reckon there's many other labels you know around that you know you can have that kind of artistic freedom to do what you want and there's no real bar barriers you know holding you back from you know taking it a step further that's what Metalheads is about. There's so many different people involved within it, like from so many different backgrounds. We're not all coming from a, a jazz background, we're not all coming from a rock background, you know, it's all different. The thing about Metalheads, when that came along, it came at a time when there was beginning to be a little bit more of a segregation in British clubland, somehow. I don't know what happened, but, you know, Rave came along and it kind of made things either sort of white or black somehow, you know what I mean? And so when I went to Speed and certain breakbeat clubs in the early days, it was the first time for some time that I was going to clubs where I was getting this mixture again, and that really meant a lot to me. Well, the Blue Note, of course, used to be um, used to be the bass clef. People were getting sick of the West End policies and all that business, and the fact that you couldn't really find a good small club in London to play intense music. So, in a way, the timing was brilliant, and and you know they set the place up, and it was a huge success. Obviously, it was there that Metalheads really kind of kicked off. Blue Knot just finished us for three years and it's just restarted the complex. I mean, the complex was an old haunt of ours. But it's just weird. I mean, I, I've had so much fun that it's just gone like that. And three years have just been just gone. It's the where they went, it just went. It's a place that people go to listen to new tunes. It's the only regular, well, three years. And whoever's going to come, you missed it. Blue Note, school, school for drum and bass, man. It's like going to school. Yeah. You do your weekly class. You know, you go to Blue Note, you hear what the new shit is. Yeah. Who's doing what? Yeah, <laughs> who's playing what, who's mixing up, whatever. It's, it's school, man, do you know what I mean? It's, it's not like going to a club, it's school and everybody knows that. I think that's the sort of original place where you can sort of play where you want, you know, play what you want, you know? Like DJs in there really go for it proper, you know? I mean, you, you get a, a total cross-section of people. I mean, from, from I've had people turn up and say they're, they're in the country for three days, they've just come from Denmark or, you know, hi, I'm from Copenhagen or I'm from Iceland or... But then you get people who are from North London, South London, West London. You also get people driven down from Watford, Manchester. So they come from everywhere. I mean, even you get people from the States. 
for who might be in town for a week and they still make it down. Yeah, so so you know it's kind of like a global little global family there. At the clubs, hard tunes go down well and like hard beats and hard bass lines. That's what that's what people want. That's what they want to hear at a club. People want, I mean, yeah, people want music that's gonna make them dance. It's gonna make them move. It's about. As I said, creating an atmosphere. Yeah. Although some DJs, on, I've heard Scott come on, Doc Scott come on, and bring it right down before we drop something that's lethal. lethal. <laughs> I never forget when Rue Ryder plays and he tears down the whole place all the time every time he plays it. I never forget those moments there. Punters here, they ain't stupid, they know music. They know their beats. As a DJ, you'll have certain certain things, and you you might be you'll be playing certain tunes, and you'll think in different places. You're thinking right that these guys aren't ready for this one yet, but in Blue Note they're always ready. They're always ready, and you're just dropping the new shit there, definitely. When you're in the club, you know you're all in there. You know, I mean, everyone can hear what tunes are being dropped, and like you know, if anyone's coming with any new styles, you know, everyone's going to hear it. You know, so it's like the place to be, really. If you're going to hear a new style of beat, you're going to hear it there first, I reckon, more than anywhere else, because people are more inclined to uh, experiment with their music down there rather than. A lot of people have been to Blue Note or whatever and they've heard about Metalheads and when it comes to their town, when they do a tour or something like that, everybody's there because they want to get on the, they want a piece of the action, they want it, you know, they, they want a piece of the vibe. And they know that it's going to be of a certain standard, you know, and of a certain quality. It's all about my head, you understand? My head is bad, you understand? It's the biggest and best thing on. I think people just didn't have the confidence that that these small scenes could ram out big places, you know. And of course they can, you know. We used to do it at the fridge, and and you know, you could, there's nothing better than sort of playing underground music to two, three thousand people. Do you know what I mean? And I think that now that the complex has come along, and you've got all those different options and all those better sound systems, you can really, you know, basically pump up hardcore music. Yeah, there's a there's a vibe at, at the clubs, obviously, because that's where everyone meets up. You know, that's where everyone would always be together. At a club, unless you there's a kind of type of meeting, or you know, someone said we go we go go kart race or something. It's gonna be cheers and beers, and a few dog spears. Now it's about the speed right, right. now. J Magic out happens to be right. the Don driver. That's why the heads are concerned. So I'm just gonna follow his black line on the track. I was, I was very worried about this race before. <laughs> I've got no gold, if you know. It's took away my weight. I lost about a pound in weight now, so that should make my advantage a little bit better. <laughs> no, that's fine. Next step in the uh, next step in the medal motion. I get a medal. That's fine. Well, you have some. If you're in any doubt as to the amount of space available to drive through, don't do it. There's plenty of time out there. Take them somewhere else. Teams, do you want to do that in here before we go next door? Who thinks they can drive? Who thinks they can drive? I'm over here. I'm over here. I'm here. I'm here. He's got a team, man. Okay. Who's got a team? Who else has got a team? Get down and fight. Hey! Ah! Hey! 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 We come to inject it, we come to play it We come to rough it, so we come to smash it Headstrong Ten years ago I was at work like everybody else I suppose and one day came acid house. <laughs> That's when my life changed. It wasn't until 93, 94 when I started to hear what was then called hardcore stroke jungle and was changing into drum and bass and I heard a couple of tracks, one by 
book and in particular a track called Music and what I liked about it, it was just uh, an Apollo as well. Just it, They were just simple and clean tracks that just had funk in, in a new way I hadn't heard before. 88, I was, I was probably just about discovering the hardcore scene then. I mean, there was a, there was a group over here called Spiral Tribe travelers who used to, you know, raid people's fields and set up tents and sound systems and that was the first, you know, my introduction to hardcore was Spiral Tribe basically in a field with loads of people off their heads on me and, you know, <laughs> before that I was a hip-hop boy, that's all that, that powered me was hip-hop. For me, the big thing about drum and bass is the fact that it is, to me, a parallel to hip-hop. The fact that when hip-hop started, it was two turntables and a mic, and it was the fact that it was something brand new, and there was an ocean of potential. Because rock and roll is tired, you know, they keep regurgitating the old things, and you just need every now and again just to close the door and to look into a wide space and go, oh, wow, this is the potential. So you start off with a planet rock, and then you get a, you know, then you get, I don't know, you get a tribe called Quest, and then you can get a Wu-Tang Clan. You know, things develop, you know, and with with drum and bass, to me it's the same thing, it's early days really, we're just five or six years into it. First originally they used to call it like bonehead music, when I used to work at City Sounds they used to call me Ray Bonehead because it was so intense and then it came up with like great hardcore, no it's, it started off as hardcore and then after hardcore um, oh, we started calling it Jungle and Jungle stayed with the scene for a long time. And then it went into like, you know, uh, uh, dark, do you know what I mean? And then it kind of went into jump up and drum and bass and now the new term for it is jungle stroke drum and bass. I would say it's, it's a music to express the times we're living in right now. I think it's just music of today, but it can be listened, you know, any time. It's like, like when Goldie called his album Timeless. It's kind of summed it up really, hasn't it, in one, in one word. Any time, doesn't matter. I mean, we still listen to 70s music now. I mean, obviously dance music, the whole scene, uh, a tra as a train journey back from the 70s and 80s, there's this, there's this one journey and there's trains going down these tracks and every couple of years it stops. And, and it's all one music. It's all back from funk, from, from jazz, going to electro, going to hip hop, going to disco music, going to house music, going to rave music. And every now and again, one of these music springs off and creates a little scene. And some of them grow massive and others stay small and have their small followers. So of course, drum and bass is at the front of that train at the moment. <laughs> Influences we really start from people like Marvin Gaye, Herbie Hancock, Yellow Jackets, Bob James, more of a sort of jazz, funk, fusion and, and soul based background. The inspiration for me was just, just really to, I heard some things that were so different from what I'd heard before and I, that's what inspired me, do you know what I mean, rather than one person. And my dad used to listen to a studio on reggae, his sisters grew up listening to soul, a lot of rare groove. It was for me when I was at school and I was just listening to, I was in the whole rave scene and the hip hop early scene and it was, I mean, it was difficult really because I was like 14, 15 and I couldn't get into pubs because I was too small. In terms of really getting into the music it was the whole sort of break dance era that really kind of intensified the whole feeling. I don't know, it was just like reggae artists I was into, like Dennis Brown, Frankie Paul, like you, there's just loads of them, you know. Um, and then like hip hop was Mantronics, a lot of like Big Daddy Kane and stuff like that, you know, I was, I was into that sort of stuff. Yeah, Ultra Magnetic MC is like one of my all time favourites. I mean, from way back in the day. See, for me, and my influences are from like people like The Clash and James Brown, and it's all, it's all fucked up, it's all mixed up, you know what I mean? But these are people that I've grown with. I like a lot of the 70s uh, jazz, psychedelic jazz, and funk, like Funkadelic. Yeah, and Miles Davis, Herbie Hancock, all those kind of people. I wasn't really even listening to the vocals or anything like that, it was just the beats I was into. 
they like all kinds of music for all kinds of reasons. They listen to sounds, you know, they're not biased towards something. If they hear an old Annie Lennox track and there's a good vocal part, they'll use it. If they hear a bit of Sun Ra and they like that kind of weird electronic keyboard he used in 1968, they'll use it. You know, they're not kind of, oh, that's jazz, we're not going to use that. They're very open-minded musically and I think that's very important. Yeah, well, it's like, you know, as I say, that train, we've got the whole...